Well, hello there. Uh, my name is David Kettlewell, and uh, welcome to this new series, Private Lessons, with uh, David Kettlewell on how to play chromatic harmonica. And what I'm thinking about relates, uh, you're relating to this series, is that not everybody's going to have an opportunity to have a private lesson with me in their lifetime. Uh, but I'd like you to have the benefit of it, even though you can't. So that's what these are about. And I'm going to duplicate, as best as I can, the process that I uh, put students through to help them to learn to control the instrument, to play whatever kind of music you want to play. Well, the beginning is for me to understand your goals. So I'd like you to take a moment, you know, and think right now, what are your goals in music? Uh, maybe you want to play jazz, or maybe you want to play blues, or you want to play classical music, or you want to be a professional, or you want to teach, or... It could be all over the place, you know, but your goals, and I would suggest you write those down and kind of keep them uh, in your consciousness, in your mind, and they will motivate you to continue uh, doing what you're going to be doing to get better. So it's kind of a way to help you, is to connect you to your personal goals. Okay, next point. And this is really a, a big one. The chromatic harmonica, and this is a Kongsheng Lyra 12 holer with a Kettlewell frictionless mouthpiece slider, which I will explain towards the end of the video what it is. The harmonica, it's a breath instrument. Every note you play, as a beginner, intermediate, expert, pro, whatever, it's going to be driven by the breath. It's a breath instrument. And it must be understood as such. How much time do you think that a professional oboe player or trumpet player has spent mastering breath control? The breath is so critically important for how you do in music with your chromatic harmonica. So what are some ramifications of that? Well, couple. You're going to want control of breath at, at very low volumes, you know. And you're going to want control of breath at high volumes. Totally. So, in a little bit here, I'm going to give you an exercise that will help you to develop control of breath, both at high and low volumes. But here's an interesting thing about the harmonica. You have to, in this instrument, not only do you control a blow out, but you learn to control a draw in. And you have to have equal control of both, because when you do a phrase, La, 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 la. As you go from blows to draws, it has to be contiguous and going in the way you want under full control. So we need control of breath and draws, and we're going to help you learn how to do that. And of course, the musculature that's required for control of a blow is different musculature than a draw. So you have to learn both. Certainly doable, not a problem. Another big idea. You do not play chromatic harmonica by successively blowing on the harp and then sucking on the harp. You breathe with the harp. You breathe with the harp. I'm going to show both. Here's blowing and sucking.
blowing, sucking. Here's breathing with. What is breathing with me? When I breathe in, air is going through my nose and my mouth. And when I breathe out, air is going out my mouth and my nose. Why? You gotta have oxygen and expel CO2 to keep your, your heart rate from going nuts. You have to breathe. In other words, you have to breathe while you're playing this instrument. So you, you wanna learn to breathe with the instrument not consider it blowing and sucking because that way, you know, you're, you're going to be able to stay respirated. So a good exercise, and here's like your first little exercise to do. That's it. Just breathe with the heart for about a minute, half a minute, a couple of times a day, three times a day. Just learn to become one with the instrument, breathing in a relaxed, natural manner. Okay, so you're gonna work on that. Okay. Now, we talked about wanting to have uh, control of uh, volume. Okay, okay. Now, there's a real easy way to do it that's kind of fun called a bell curve. You play a note real gently, you go up to high volume under control, then back down again in a mirror image, okay, which takes you from low volume to up and high volume down. So here's kind of what that sounds like. what it sounds like with a beginner. It's, it's really hard for somebody in the beginning or somebody without training who maybe is even an intermediate player who hasn't worked on their breath to get that control of that like volume. If you want to control something with chromatic harmonica, you must practice that. You want control of volume? You have to practice volume. So if you want control of a given thing, you have to practice that. Okay, now that pretty much finishes up our first lesson. I am gonna give you a quick explanation of what this Kettlewell Frictionless Mouthpiece slider is all about. I in, uh, invented it, designed it, and I built them. Uh, it's a device to provide friction-free movement to new note hole positions so your lips don't rest on the mouthpiece reshaping constantly. They rest relaxed on the slider. And the slider goes back and forth. Okay. And there's no more saliva used to lubricate, so the harp stays much, much, much cleaner. And it's just more relaxing and easier to play. That's what it is. Got a well frictionless mouthpiece slider. It's kind of like the shoulder rest for violin. It's a tool that helps people. And uh, if you're interested in learning more, you can send me a personal email at mastersofharmonica.com. The website, mastersofharmonica.com. Go up to the contact link, send me a personal email. Okay, that concludes our first lesson together. And to recap, it's a breath instrument. Okay, and uh, you want to learn to control uh, draws and blows. Uh, you want to breathe with the instrument, get into the habit of breathing with the instrument. And you can use the bell curve to develop the skill of playing at various volumes. See you in the next lesson.